Shout out to Thomas Loop on Patreon for two months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on this channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. What's up guys, Kwezi or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create these cool colorful painted camo background things. Uh, it's kind of like a liquid camo paint, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of terms that you could use to describe this, uh, but basically it's colorful backgrounds. Um, you can see a few here, and actually after this tutorial comes out, I'll be dropping a free pack of a bunch of the ones I've created. Um, also at 100 likes, I'll post this Photoshop file um, in the description for you guys to download. Uh, but this is sort of what we're going to be going ahead and creating. and. I made this little pack here of a few, I'm probably going to add more for the free pack I'll drop next week, um, but I've used them so many times since I've created them um, for different projects like uh, some apparel designs and just some normal everyday designs where I need some like paint texture or some color. Um, so they've been like a great asset to use and hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please leave a like, subscribe for more and let's go ahead and get started. So let's create a new document. You can make it whatever size you want, um, like 1920 by 1080 works. I'm going to do a 720 um, size document, 12, 1280 by 720 that is. It's a little smaller and should make things go a little quicker. And I'm going to make the uh, background black. And we're just going to go ahead and duplicate that background right away. So we have two black layers and if we right click, convert to smart object, this will now be a smart object. And we want to go to filter. Uh, render and clouds and you'll notice that generates clouds obviously and then we can also do if you don't want to do clouds you could do difference clouds so those are the two options but we'll go ahead with clouds first and what we want to do is come down to these effects and we want threshold and you notice once you do that you get this kind of look and if we take this arrow and move it around, you can see it changes um, how much black and white we have. Uh, but you get these real rough edges, which is what we want. And let's go back to like 125, that should work. And there's a few ways you could go about doing this. I like to go uh, about it by going to select and then doing color range. And actually we should not be on that threshold to do that. Let's go ahead and just create a new layer. Let's go to select color range and you can do white or black. I'm going to do the white and I'm going to click that and click OK. It will select all the white areas and what I want to do is go down to solid color and pick a color. So we'll just do red or something. And then what you want to do is come back to that smart object, filter, and you can do difference clouds or normal clouds. Uh, but go ahead, go ahead and do it again. Make sure your colors are black and white though. I screwed that up. Let's go ahead and try it one more time. There we go. Um, and then you can come back in and mess with this threshold once again. So maybe we go with less or maybe more. Um, let's see, we're gonna select the white. So let's do a little more black. Let's do something like that. And now let's go ahead, click the smart object, go to select, color range, click okay again go to the very top and add a, another color fill or a solid color. Um, let's just do some basic colors. So we'll do blue and we just want to repeat this process. So let's do it one more time and the threshold, maybe we move it back a little bit All right. yeah, we'll go down a little bit, maybe to 150. Then again, let's select color range and get one more color fill. So we kind of have the completed set here and we'll do like a green. Then you can come to the threshold and just add a normal solid color to be the background. So maybe like a darkish blue. And there we go. There are our colors that we can go ahead and mess around with. Now these are all solid colors and this isn't a great color palette. So you're going to want colors that work well together. Um, so for example, if I go to window and um, libraries, I do have my color palette for my channel, which is here. So I'm going to do the dark purple background, 
color this yellow, let's do the pink, and let's do the blue. So that's a pretty good color palette there. But my favorite um, works were using the uh, using these with gradients. Because I think the gradient looks were the best. So if I come back here and hide all of these, you can see this is flat color. This is flat color. That's actually the color scheme I have here um, with some white lines as well. Um, but like then this is the gradient looks. And I think the gradient looks are the best. So what you want to do is come in to one of these layers, double click to get your blending options or your layer styles. Go to the gradient overlay. Um, and I'm going to make sure this is normal. And let's go ahead. I have some gradients already here. And I'm going to be re releasing a free gradient pack soon. Um, but for the meantime, try to create your own or find some. I have a few already made. So let's see what is a good one. I actually kind of like this one here. So I'm going to go with this guy. Um, if I pull it up, you can see it's just like blues and purples. And it's pretty simple. Let's click OK. And the key here is going to be the angle and the scale. So for this one, we'll do an angle of zero and we'll do the scale at 100%. Let's click OK. Let's right click, copy that layer style and paste it to the other two. Don't want to do the bottom one because that's the background color. We'll leave that alone. So paste it. You'll notice it all blends together and that's because we have to come in here and change the angle and the scale. So let's kind of flip it. Let's go 135. Maybe increase the scale or decrease the scale, whatever you prefer. Um, this one will decrease the scale. Cool. Let's go to the other one and let's make the angle more downwards like that and maybe increase the scale. Click OK. And there's our first pattern. And you can see this right now is basically a camo pattern in itself. And if we didn't have the um, gradients on it, you could you could use that as a camo pattern. And I want to mention that there's a few other things you could do here before we go on to like making this look all liquidy. Um, and that's if you come into one of these and just duplicate them. And if we just right click rasterize layer style, and we'll go to filter, stylize, find edges on this one, and then press command I, and then let's just do um, like a linear dodge. Press command T, right click, and let's flip horizontal, and maybe like rotate it. And you can see we get these lines. So you can add the like cool lines into your camo, and maybe we duplicate it again, and let's rotate it and increase the size. Cool. So that's another thing you can add. And I think that looks pretty cool. I think this in itself is pretty awesome. Um, so I'm going to actually put all of this in a group here. So I'm going to select all these layers, all the color fills, not the threshold or the smart object. We'll group it with command G and then command J to duplicate. And now we can go ahead and do some cool effects. So let's press command E to merge this layer. And whatever we do to this, we'll still have this main group to fall back on, which is nice. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer and let's go to filter and liquify. And you'll notice this is way too big. So actually let's come back here. Let's delete that. Get your rectangle marquee tool, select everything, command C, command V. And now go to filter liquify and it should just be held within our document. There we go. I'm going to zoom out with command minus one time and I'm going to get the twirl option here. And you can see my settings over here. Um, so 400, 500, 100, 80, or 80, and pin edges. Uh, so I think these are the default settings. We'll just go with that. You can mess around with the settings further if you get more comfortable with the liquify tool. I don't really use it too much. So I'm just going to leave the settings as the default. And let's go ahead and mess around with this a little bit. Uh, let's go through the whole thing going like from um, the bottom left to the top right and like back and forth like that and then go the opposite direction so we're like crisscrossing and then go into some circles and we can get some crazy looks by doing this and really distort it and depending on what you want you might you might want to either do a lot of this or a little um, sometimes when you do a lot I think it looks good but I think a lot of times it doesn't pull it doesn't come out too well 
especially with the little white lines but I'm just gonna show you what it kind of looks like after you go for a while um, so let's go we'll call the day there um, let's click OK and the thing is when you use the gradients I think the look is really nice uh, but obviously these little lines don't come out very good so I would probably do something a little lighter on the liquify in this case but even as is I think this looks pretty cool and just looks pretty neat um, but let's say that we want to try again so we have that layer we can hide it let's go back to this layer get the rectangular marquee tool again and make a new version so just command C command or command C command V um, and let's go back to the liquify and maybe we just do something a little more subtle uh, we could get this move one and kind of just move things around a little bit and then get the twist and we'll just do something small like that I think that's a little too blurry I probably wouldn't even do that much yeah I'll probably do something like that just on the edges a little bit that's pretty cool and there you go there's a pretty cool option and uh, another thing you can do instead of the liquify is go to filter uh, distort and you could do wave that's an option or you could do something like twirl which will kind of give you that liquify effect right in the middle something like that and then look that can uh, look pretty cool like in I think it's this one started off like that um, and then you can do something like filter distort uh, polar coordinates and if you look at that preview you get like a globe kind of look and the polar to rectangular isn't the best but rectangular to polar I think is uh, pretty neat looking depending on what you're using um, so there's a lot of options to mess around and distort these for this one I created I kind of like this just normal camo here I think that looks pretty sick um, and I'd be really happy with that I think I'm gonna actually add this to the painted liquid pack then Another thing you can do with these is, um, so say you don't like your color too much, you can come down and add a hue and saturation. Maybe you want to boost the saturation, make it a little brighter, or you want to change the color, you can mess with the hue, get some different stuff. Or if you just dislike one of the colors, so maybe this pink is a little too much, uh, you could go to the magentas and change the magenta colors um, to something like, maybe we just go all blue, uh, maybe we do something crazy like green. I probably want to keep it close to the family though so like something like that would work um, and you can mess around with a lot of that stuff and it's a lot of fun to go about creating these looks but you can get a whole array of looks which is why I love doing this um, so we have like this look the four look then we have this one then we have this guy which looks nothing like the original and then we have this guy that looks even more nothing like the original um, so it's a really fun thing to mess around with this is like the painted one it looks the most painted um, in my opinion and maybe we drag this hue up here to see what that looks like and I think that looks pretty cool but that's the tutorial guys I hope you enjoyed I hope you learned something um, to create some cool looking backgrounds that you can use in your designs uh, if you enjoyed leave a like subscribe for more tutorials follow me on Twitter at Quezzy and on Instagram that's Quezzy check out my website if you're interested in hitting me up for any projects or anything like that but thank you guys for watching I'll see you in the next one. Peace.